Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by 99designs, the world's largest graphic design marketplace. 99designs connects businesses seeking quality, affordable designs with a community of more than 225,000 graphic designers. Visit 99designs.com slash AAA to receive a free power pack upgrade valued at $99. And by lynda.com. Learn what you want, when you want, with access to over 2,000 high-quality online courses and training videos, all for one low monthly price. To try it free for seven days, visit lynda.com slash allaboutandroid. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash allaboutandroid. Hello and welcome to another episode of All About Android, episode 144, recorded on Tuesday, January 14th, 2014. 144, January 14th, Whoa. 2014. That's a, wow. lot, that's a lot of ones that, and fours. Yeah, I didn't realize 14, that. 1414. <laughs> we are your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. I'm Ron Richards. I'm Gina Trapani. Boom, back in the saddle. All three of us together again. It's good to be back. It's been yeah. back together. Been a while. Yeah. Sorry I missed last week. I was busy. It's okay. I'm sorry. I had a it's work okay. thing. Yeah. Threw a big event on Thursday last week. At the, in the Real city, life is city. crazy. Yeah, I know. It's tough. Yeah. So. It's just the way it goes. But I've been looking forward to this all week. Yes. And I'm very excited to have us all be back. Oh, my lower third. We should put my Google Plus thing there. Anyway. Oh. Um, well, because now that I'll I hit have, it up and. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, okay. So, and what? it ended up not being the I'm, one that you wanted. It's, it's just, just my name. It's slash plus Ron Richards. Oh, that's so, right. At least so I have that. It's pretty yeah. great that you got that because that's a pretty common. Because right. because there is a comedian yeah. and a politician named Ron Richards, and you would think that they would be social media savvy, but I I am more. So, yeah. There you go. There nice. You go. <laughs> nice. Because yeah, you know I heard you don't return your about me messages, Ron. So I heard yeah. that too. <laughs> I do sometimes. Uh, Sorry. It's bad Sorry. form, Ron. It's bad, bad form. form. I get a lot of email. A lot of email. As we all do. We do. It's true. But there's so much going on. Yeah, we have a lot going on this week. Uh, we'll be discussing, uh, I think it's Google's at-home initiative kind of becoming a little clearer. Moto X finally, finally crosses the pond. Uh, Nokia Normandy, which we keep hearing little bits about. Uh, a little bit more news there that kind of makes it look like Windows Phone. Kind of crazy. And a lot more. Before we get into the news... Uh, as as we've been doing lately, we're breaking the Android platform distribution numbers out of the news segment to get it out of the way as early as possible. And I mean, w what do we have to say? Jelly bean, fifty nine point one percent. Gingerbread, twenty one point two percent. Ice cream sandwich, sixteen point nine percent. You're going to start. I mean, obviously, ice cream sandwich and jelly bean are going to swap those numbers continually. And then Kit Kat, one point four percent. Oh, little tiny Kit Kat. Oh, yeah. to Alan with gingerbread. Well, that's a good. That's a good baseline for the year. Another 2014. So we'll see how that 1.4 grows. I will admit that 1.4 is smaller than I thought it would be, and maybe I'm just biased because I've been on on it for so long. Yeah. And I've been on the Nexus Five, but I thought after the holiday season and all stuff like that, there would be more Kit Kat in yeah. the marketplace. Yeah. I mean, but, there are still devices kind of launching yeah. with 4.2 Jelly Bean yeah. or 4.3, um, yeah. and not necessarily launching right away with with yeah. Kit Kat out of the gate, but but still at the same time, I still feel like we do. Uh, see a lot of new devices launching with KitKat. Right. It has not been that long. Right. So I guess that's a good thing. It feels uh, longer. It feels, like yeah. I've had, it feels like I've had this Nexus 5 forever. It feels like this is the phone. It's like my forever. <laughs> oh, I've had it forever. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I meant that in a good way. I feel okay. very comfortable with it. I feel very, it's a nice phone. I like it. But, but KitKat isn't that you know, it has, isn't that? It's pretty still, still pretty young. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you've had the Nexus 5 running Jelly Bean. So, and the Jelly Bean number is pretty big. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, it, yeah, and as I look at this now, I, I feel like ice cream sandwich is going to become the honeycomb, really, because, I, I, I don't know, I, you, that ice cream sandwich is going to fold into jelly bean, uh, potentially, and, the, and slowly and, you know, hopefully eventually fade away. But it's that gingerbread number. We just got to get rid of the gingerbread. As delicious as it is, bye-bye. Uh, let's, uh, let's get to some pretty top news stories this week. I mean, this one... This is uh, big. Every every once in a while, you get it right. I get it right. Yeah. And 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 uh, I'll be honest. I was hoping I'd get this one right. I didn't think it would happen so soon. 
But uh, for those who, who who haven't put the dots together, it might have been, was it on the New Year's Eve episode? It was the New Year's Eve episode. It was the New Year's Eve episode, and we were yeah. speculating about Google and home automation and how that was really the future and what are they going to do. And I, I don't know if I ranted, but I kind of went off for a little bit about how Nest is really the leader in this space. They, they make a thermostat, and they just launched, they rolled out a smoke detector. And wouldn't it be great? In fact, I think Google, and I, I predicted that Google would probably purchase Nest, and could you imagine the merging of the two and be one? Wonderful. And lo and behold, yesterday the news broke that Google is indeed buying Nest for $3.2 billion. Paltry sum. A paltry sum. Importantly, also, uh, the co-founder and CEO of Nest, uh, Tony Fidel, will continue to lead the business unit under in Google. So will continue under his leadership. Independently. Um, yeah. Independently. And they have continued their commitment to supporting iOS. So it's not like they're going to yeah. abandon Android. Um, and I couldn't be happier. Not because... I called it, but because this is a brilliant move to step towards home automation because Nest gets it. Nest is doing Nest is creating interesting new devices with good UI. They're they're innovating in the space as opposed to just replicating. You know, like yeah. as I say as saying, Oh hey, we can make a thermostat you that you can control with your phone. No, they made a thermostat that that is energy saving and, and has a different um, interface and all these different aspects to it. It's the right this is a great move for home automation. And so I, I don't even own any Nest products and I'm like raving about it. But um I just love <laughs> I it. I, I rent, so I can't really I I can't I don't have a thermostat. I live in San Francisco. Hey, um, you can, you can. Well, I guess it depends on. Yeah, I literally you don't have a. Have, yeah, okay. yeah, I literally don't have a thermostat. Some in my of the places apartment. just yeah, don't yeah, have so, them in yeah, the apartment. So. That's true. Um, but I, I mean, I, and I know I saw and I tweeted about it. I was like, called it, and a couple of people on my Twitter feed were like, oh, st I don't, you know, I don't want Google anywhere near my house. And and I saw the joke. What was it? It was like, um, how many times is Google going to make me sign up for Google Plus in order to change my thermostat? Yeah, are, are your circles yeah. going to be able to, to, you know, change the uh, the, yeah. the temperature in your living room? Yeah, and but. Regardless of those jokes, I think it's great. But what do you think? Is it you think it's a good move? I think well, you know, hey, Google at home from two years ago has not really done a whole lot. Exactly. And uh apparent and you know, Google yeah. I mean they, they instantly kind of did something pretty pretty great. They got kind of what you know, arguably one of the biggest uh, players in the home automation uh, yeah. space right now, definitely the one that has, you know, largely the most mind share, yeah. and brought them in, and now suddenly Google at Home uh, initiative seems a lot more uh, palatable. Yeah, you should get Nest stuff. You should get the Nest thermostat yeah, and the smoke detector your for your, your home. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, you were you were saying I don't have Nest, but blah blah blah. Now we'll get. The Google yeah. Nest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Although it's going to be autonomous, right? At least that's what they say. They're going to run independent. Like Waze. And, um, and, I'm, and they've got to integrate it. They've got, I mean. I don't right. Know. What do you think about all this, Gina? Uh, I thought the price was pretty high. Yeah. Uh, although, I mean, I guess companies are worth as much as someone's willing to pay for them. And I guess $3.2 billion isn't a whole lot to Google. Um, I think Nest sounds like a really interesting product. I haven't tried it myself. I don't think that consumers buy <laughs> smoke alarms and and uh, and thermostats very very often. Like when I think home automation, I think smart coffee makers, smart refrigerators, uh, you know, lights. I think I think of of, the, of that kind of thing. Uh, but I think it makes a lot of sense for Google. I, you know, look, I, I mean, I've accepted <laughs> Google's data collection and, and the whole, all, all the convenience that comes with giving up sort of giving up privacy or at least sharing information with Google uh, for, for the convenience of things being smart and, 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 um, and I'm getting smart services. But I still don't love the idea about the whole, the Nest thing where it knows what rooms you're in and what times. Uh, it just, just knows a lot about your location and, and, and how you're spending your time in, in, in a kind of private space. That makes me feel a little ooky. But um, but look, I'm I'm buying a new place, and I would love to I'd love to get Nest. I'd love to install it uh, yeah. and see see what it's like because it saves you money, right? I mean, that's the whole thing. Potentially, and Le Leo Laporte mm -hmm. was saying earlier today, though, that like he I, I think he's deactivated a lot of the smart capabilities yeah. of Nest because it wasn't very good at determining uh, when he was in mm. a certain room or whatever. And, oh, interesting. Um, so I don't know, you know, your mileage may vary. But. Well, and as far as the price, uh, $3.2 I mean, yes, that's a ridiculous large amount of money. But when you think about it, this is a company that is creating consumer products. Like there's a manufacturing yeah. and a supply chain. It's a physical product and there are factories involved and all that sort of stuff. It's not just software. So, right. you know, in addition now, Google has potential entry point into that marketplace and whether they leave nest alone or slowly fold it into you know go, you know google at home services or whatever or energy sense like we're going to talk about in a second or anything like that 
um, you know, they've already got the supply chain. And, and, you know, with the Nexus phones, we've seen now the price get run down on these. I mean, you can get mm -hmm. this unlocked for three fifty. I, I firmly believe they could probably get the thermostats down to that $99 magic price point. That would be, and the smoke detector is much cheaper. I know this because I bought it for my sister for, for Christmas. Um, the smoke detector, I think, was like 120 or something like that. And it's the kind of product that you look at it and you see the price tag and, and you see the product and you kind of scoff at it like, oh, I don't need that. But once you get it in your house and use it, right. it's like, oh, this is cool. Like, it's one of those kind of, you know, moments. Yeah, so, some, yeah. some people in the chat room are wondering what this has to do with Android. And I think the implication is that with Nest and home automation stuff like Nest yep. and, and, you know, there are other products is, I mean, just think about the case capabilities of something like Google Now yep. uh, integrating with the data that is generated from, you know, your Nest devices knowing, you know, that you're home or not, or knowing that you're, you know, you turn on navigation through Google Now and you're five miles away and it, it automatically, you know, it turns on your thermostat to a higher level so that it's warm when you get home or, you know, maybe that starts a little bit later or whatever, or, or but there's, God, there's or, integration capabilities. Yeah, God forbid there's a smoke, dete smoke detection in your house while you're at work. It can message you. You know, right. like, like all the, think about all these ways to get, you know, further connected to your house. And, you know, Jeannie, you bring up the point about, you know, data collection and things like that. But honestly, it's the use of, it's the data collection for data mining so that then you can then cool your house or heat your house more efficiently and right. save an energy and save your energy bills. And, you know, and that kind of ties into additionally, um, we got a little, remember last year there was a little peak of uh, energy sense, uh, mm -hmm. Google's, you know, step towards uh, doing uh, kind of home energy management. Around the thermostat. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, so here's the, um, so we got a, uh, over on Android Police, yeah, there's an there's a interesting little sneak peek at it um, to see what Energy Sense is kind of looking like and how it might, uh, and what, you know, what it, what it's going to look like. And if you scroll down a little more, there's the Android app version of it, so you can see right. how they've implemented it into an application format. Um, again, very similar to Nest, although a little more cartoony than Nest. Um, yeah, and I mean, yeah. we we took a look at these screenshots in December. This is yeah. just, you know, more more to just kind of point out, like obviously Google was already thinking about this kind of stuff, and then you know, hindsight is always twenty twenty, right? Yep. Now we're you know a couple of weeks into January, and they acquired Nest. Who knows how fast this deal happened? Yep. But it's very possible that all of these things are kind of converging at around the same time. So, and if you have a team that's working on home something. automation, and then you buy the the leader in it, then instantly. Recently, you like Google is going to be able to not give Nest the resources they need to go further, but then to bring that knowledge into what Google is doing to make the products mm -hmm. all, overall better. I mean, yeah. I think it's you know it's great. So um, honestly, going back to what I said on New Year's Eve, Google is now way way outpacing Microsoft in Microsoft's home uh, hope for the home kind of. We talked about that. How Microsoft yeah, kind of the, yeah, Microsoft's just really not part of that conversation at all. No. And honestly, if you ask me, Google is now leapfrogging way past Apple. I mean, yeah. Apple isn't doing anything as interesting as this when it comes to it. So, um, I, for as as an Android user, I'm excited because I think it's it'll give us even more applications to extend our you know kind of digital kind of control over our lives. So that's pretty cool. And, and further evidence of the fact that Google is also a hardware company now. Yep. Like, they're firmly in the hardware yeah. company field. They're not just all well, about... Both. Well, they are. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. absolutely. But, um, you know, more and more, that's not a weird thing to hear or to yeah. uh, to understand yep. uh, that they're doing hardware. So, and uh, mm -hmm. I think that's great. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so this is a little a little complicated here, but I thought these these three stories, the two the two studies that I'm going to talk about, and then Gina, you have the the last one, kind of creates an interesting picture here. So bear with me. First, a research study from Asimco that breaks out just how much Google makes per user every year: six dollars and thirty cents. This is excluding China, considering that Google is the internet to an, a, just a huge amount of people, and there are 2.5 billion internet users. It's an incredible amount of money. Android plays a pivotal role that becomes more and more clear over time, with 65% of the world still not using the internet. Uh, emerging markets actually stand to bring Google even more internet users, increasing their take. And Android, of course, in all of this looks to be... Uh, the many, you know, many future internet users' first internet device or their first computer. So we have a large pool of untapped internet users ripe for the picking when it comes to Android. That's good for Google, obviously. Um, the question being, is it good for developers? And this is a question that comes up time and time again, right? Uh, you know, like just as an example, farmers in Namibia, you know, 
they aren't going to they're going to need something that's a little more localized like there are tons of developers in the US creating apps and everything yeah. but those are really useful to you know people who understand English and read English and and have needs that maybe you know people in the United States do which would be different for farmers in in Namibia um, so they're going to need more localized apps over there uh, Vision Mobile published a study that shows, however, that a trend is emerging where more developers than ever before are targeting Android when forced to choose which platform to develop for. Uh, so, it, which is something that I'm happy, you know, we, we talk about that all the time. Are you developing for Android first or iOS first? Um, why are they doing this? Well, with emerging markets coming, uh, you know, coming into the picture, come those emerging opportunities for developers within those markets to develop apps that target the region. Uh, so that ends up being great for those localized region. Uh, um, something like this has a significant impact on on this because emerging markets are likely have less money to spend on apps. Right. So and then and then Gina, you have the the third kind of study, which I thought kind of tied into this as well. Why don't you take that? Yeah, a study by Gartner uh, predicts that as the Play Store and other markets uh, get more and more packed with apps, there's more than a million at the moment in the Play Store, even the good ones won't make developers much money. This is paid apps because uh, it's just harder and harder for apps to get found. Right. Um, so there, and, and because we have this kind of saturation, there's almost always a free alternative to paid apps. Uh, so yeah, it's just going to get harder to make money through paid apps. There's, of course, in-app purchase and advertising. Um, so... Yeah, paid apps don't <laughs> appear to be the future of making money for for developers, or at least according to this Gartner study. I mean, going totally from my gut and not crunching any of this data myself, I still think that an app that has provable value and strong marketing, people will pay for it. Uh, but if you're talking about emerging markets, this is the thing, like... If Google is targeting emerging markets and pe getting people online, having their first online experience on an Android device, uh, on, on a flaky connection in a non-English you know, non speaking scenario, it requires a level of empathy from developers for a global audience that I think a lot yeah. of American you know, developers don't have with our fancy broadband pipes and our, um, you know, just the, uh, you know, our, our worldview, right, in our office jobs. Um, so I think, that's, I think that's part of the reason why a lot of, a lot of mobile apps do go iOS first, right, because that's, that's kind of the, uh, it's a different market. And it's, you know, developers building apps for people who also go to offices and sit on broadband connections all day as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it does require a, 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 a new level of empathy, but I think it's really important for developers to just be aware of, of what these, you know, who these, who, what these emerging markets look like and what services they really need. Do these developers stand to, you know, developers want to make money, of course. Mm -hmm. Do they stand to gain uh, by by doing this by by targeting the emerging markets? Um, I mean, well, I think it's essential it's for. I mean, it kind of, it almost reminds me of, I've been doing a lot of urban history yeah. podcast listening and stuff like that. And I was listening to a lot of the San Francisco history and the gold rush of 1848. And to see the people, the, a lot of people who actually made money on the gold rush weren't the people actually mining gold. It was the people selling axes and picks and things like that. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, so. Uh, yes. Right. So kind of, it, kind of around the opportunity itself and not necessarily. Exactly, and, and so, so, yeah. so those who see the potential of a emerging marketplace, and I know this is much different than the gold rush, but um, but you see an emerging marketplace and you see an opportunity, the person who sees that opportunity and does the work to cultivate it and not only help grow that marketplace to let it emerge, they can that can often be very profitable. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you build you build market share, you build user base, you build you know like they're all the you, you build, build habit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's their first exposure to a yeah. uh, computer. You know, in in air quotes or yeah, the internet. I mean, so. think think about how long. Go back to let's let's compare it to the internet. Think and if you're like me, and I know you guys are, remember back to 1995 to 2001. That six year period. How long did it take you to peel off of Yahoo and embrace another search engine? <laughs> it took me like four years. It yeah. took, I think 1999 yeah. was when I moved to Alta Vista finally, you know, and then eventually to Google. Hard time remembering, but, but yes, yeah, I, no, I, right, I, but I used the time Yahoo was the main everything. thing. Like yeah. Yahoo was where you went for the internet because it was an emerging market, and they were there and they built it, and mm -hmm. you know, so yeah, yeah. absolutely.
Interesting. I mean, there, there are three studies that kind of tackle a different angle, but it, it yeah, all kind of painted a very interesting picture. Obviously, the big winner, and it's painfully apparent by the fact that Google can burn $3.2 billion and, you know, it's just they're sneezing that money out of their nose, uh, is that Google obviously uh, gains so much from this. What, whether there's money to be made in those emerging markets from, you know, development of apps or, or not. Google has those eyeballs and that man that just shows you the power and the reach of, uh, of Google. Interesting stuff. Uh, so we have a voicemail that I think Ron's going to find uh, yes. interesting here. But I actually thought this was just a great uh, use for the Google Wallet card, which we probably all have in our wallet and have not used yet, I'm guessing. I haven't gotten mine yet, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. I haven't put money on it yet. <laughs> Should. Why haven't I gotten mine yet? Let's hear it. Hey, guys. Uh, love the show. Uh, big Android fanboy. Um, a couple of weeks ago or months ago, you guys uh, featured that Google Wallet now has a debit card. Well, uh, I went ahead and signed up for it and got it about a month ago. Didn't know what I was going to use it for, but I thought you guys would be interested to hear what I use it for today. I, I got to Wendy's and didn't have my wallet. So I kept it in my car for that situation. Uh, I was able to quickly go to their wallet and activate the card. Um, add 20 bucks from my credit card. Um, in about five minutes in the parking lot, I was able to go back in, pay for my order. And uh, later that day, I was able to pay uh, at the pump uh, for the rest of the balance uh, to put gas in my car. Just a really cool feature for anyone who's not using the Google Wallet uh, debit card day to day. It's a great uh, emergency fund to keep in your car. As long as you have your phone, you can uh, get some money and uh, spend it somewhere. Emergency. Anyway, I thought you guys might find that interesting. Emergency Love use. Why not? I, I, like, I, I like how... Hey, Triple A crew, it's Brian from Connecticut. Hey, Brian. Hey, Brian. You're going to have to hold you on. You turn. hold on. I like how the, this whole story hinges on the fact that it wasn't in his wallet. <laughs> right? Like, he didn't have his wallet. And <laughs> That's so, <all> right. true. <laughs> and apparently, I have not peeled off my activation sticker on my wallet. Which shows how much you've used it. I'm not sure if it's even been activated. I can't remember. It went right into my wallet when I got it. Uh, but hey, if you're wondering what to use your Google Wallet physical card for, leave it in your car. And when you forget your yeah. wallet or your money when you go to Wendy's, there you go. <laughs> the chat yeah. room has a very good question. Do you pe ever peel off any stickers off your... <laughs> you know, and I'm... The, Before I'm, the show, we were talking about it. Someone wrote in a letter and uh, pointed out this is a sticker on the back of the Nexus 5 that none of us had peeled off. And um, there you go. Yeah, here, here it is. It has um, been peeled. Yeah. It, has it has been, been peeled. peeled. Yep. I don't know why I left it on there for so long. I honestly thought I was going to destroy my phone if I tried to pick it away and it wasn't meant to come off. So that's my excuse on this. I have no excuse for the Google Wallet sticker. I uh, just, but, but I am the first person in the world to peel off the sticker that's on a device. There you go. That, like, covers a screen or oh, whatever. Yeah, no, oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah. what, are you kidding? Yeah, get it off. Yeah, I'm there. <laughs> yes, um, thank nice, you. Brian. Very nice, nice. Brian. You are quick with selecting those special transitions. Well I'm impressed. I did realize I didn't get my Google Wallet card because I never actually went through and finished the uh, sign-up for it, so I just did it. So I should have it in 10 to 12 days, they say. And then what will you do with it? I will put it in my wallet, and <laughs> it'll be right next to my simple bank card that I don't use either. So. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Yeah. yeah. So. Just what we need. More more cards in our wallet, even though Google Wallet is meant to make less Life cards. easier, yeah. yeah. In your wallet. Coin. Yeah. That's cool. That's a good, nice, that was a nice little hack. So there we go. Good stuff. Yeah. Life hack, I, like I guess. <laughs> Let's take a break and thank our first sponsor for today's episode, 99 Designs. Love 99 Designs, connecting people looking for great graphic design with a community of more than 225,000 graphic designers from all over the world. Super talented people use 99designs, and you can tap into that talent for whatever your project is. Do you need a new logo, mobile app, business card, T-shirt, uh, funny hat? Uh, mustache. I don't know. You you know I'm just, I'm, just uh, I'm spitballing here. But <laughs> you can get any kind of graphic design, and you'll find the right designer for your project at 99designs. It's very simple. Here's how it works. You tell 99designs what you need. Dozens of designers from their community will submit designs created just for you. You'll give those designers your feedback to help them refine uh, their designs and then essentially select and pay for your absolute favorite from the bunch. And you're going to get a lot of great designs. You'll be surprised at just how much uh, you know usable, awesome stuff you have to select from. You're going to have a hard time picking just one to, uh, to go with. If you're developing an Android app, you can get anything from icons to buttons to your entire mobile app designed at 99designs. And I believe we're 
kind of looking at a, a few of those apps here in the marketplace. And, That's really cool. you know, you can kind of take a look at uh, what's being designed and how many total entries, 161 entries, 114 entries, 86 entries, just... I mean that that's like that's just an overwhelming amount to sift through and you're guaranteed to find something that really hits home that uh, really kind of hits what you envision for your project um you can start your next graphic design project for as low as 199 dollars uh, all you have to do is visit 99designs.com aaa you'll get a 99 dollar power pack of services for free and a power pack gives you more designer time and attention. 99designs will bold, highlight, and feature your design project in the 99designs marketplace, and you'll get nearly twice as many designs. So if this sounds good to you, visit 99designs.com slash AAA. Go check it out. See what they have up there and some of the, you know, the campaigns that are happening right now. It's literally, it's a contest for you. Like when you sign <laughs> up for this, it's a contest for people to create things that uh, that you pick from, that you you decide the winner, and you end up kind of benefiting from it because you get an awesome design. So check it out. Uh, we thank 99designs for their support of All About Android and the Twit Network. It's good having you back week after week. All right, let's get into hardware. few announcements from Motorola. They had a press event today, and as we predicted, we thought they would announce the Moto X. Finally coming into Europe, the UK, France, and Germany, and that's in February 1st. Uh, but it will not get the Moto Maker customization option for now. It will launch with 4.4 KitKat and Europe for 399 euros. Good, it's about Ooh. time. There yeah, yeah. Our friends across the pond enjoy. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Moto G now has a uh, Google Play edition uh, available in the Play Store starting at 179 And I think that they're... Ooh, I mean, it's the blah, same blah, blah. price as the regular... Yeah, same price. Same so price like uh, available. 8 gig, 16 gig, 179 and 99 respe 199 respectively. Part of me was like, why would I buy the Play Store edition? It's not that different yeah. than the... You know, the, the straight Moto G, I guess you'd call it. Uh, but options, options are good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so, it's casting so, so, a wide net. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, because like the customers, you know, the Motorola customizations are really not that uh, yeah. significant over, over right. the top. And it, it feels weird thinking that, like, why would you release a play edition of a device? Because I want all devices to have a play edition to, so that you have those options. Uh, but with right. the Moto G, yeah, you're right. It does kind of feel like, oh, okay. But at the same time, it is different. So I guess if you yeah. want to be true, you're going to lose some stuff, obviously, with yeah. that. But that's it's kind of the point. Running pure KitKat. Yeah. Not just yeah, that. It's pure, pure KitKat. Pure. The good stuff. Yeah, it's like opening that 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 can of Folgers yeah, for the very first time. Gives you a time. break when you need it, man. It just yeah, it's oh, like, that's good stuff. It'll be interesting to see if the play of the GP gets the 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 updates faster than the the other the re the straight Moto G, the regular Moto G. Oh yeah, because well, it's running pure Kit Kat. Uh -huh. Pure yeah. Kit Kat. <laughs> pure as the Arctic I'm snow. I'm just making fun of because the article actually makes a point saying it's running pure Kit Kat 4.4, and I'm like, what is there an impure Kit Kat? I mean, I guess with all the stock and all with the stuff put on top of it, whatever. I just like that description, pure. So yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The Moto G is a nice, a nice phone. I, we got it from my mother-in-law for for the holidays, and um, it's a it's a cool, it's a nice nice handset. I like it a lot. Awesome. Finally, we haven't seen a tablet from Motorola for over two years. The last one was the the Zoom, the X Zoom. Um, <laughs> 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 Motorola CEO Dennis Woodside told Pocket Lint that a Moto Maker tablet is likely to happen eventually but in the near term they're focusing on the five billion people without smartphones so they're sticking to phones for now and uh, not going tablet anytime soon but maybe down the road I, I gotta tell you i think motorola is doing the right thing here sticky sticking to smartphones especially around the customization i don't know i i, I don't know that there is a is people are clamoring yeah. to customize their tablet as much as they are their smartphone yeah it seems like the the obvious evolution to what they're offering, but they're going to gain so much more by focusing on the smartphone right now. They've already just, you know, they, they already have so much momentum around the X and the G. Uh, so that kind of doesn't surprise me. Although eventually, yeah, it's inevitable, right? Yeah. They have to offer a tablet through there. I did find it interesting in the Moto X um, 
the Motorola's official blog for the announcement of the Moto X coming to Europe is that they call out, all of these experiences are built on a foundation of pure Android with no skins to slow you down. Pure and Android. It's the good it's stuff. The pure. It's the there good go. stuff. Listen, man, this is the pure <sighs> Android that yeah. you want. It's none of that none of that tainted stuff, man. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Talk about tainted. Um, we have been hearing Ooh. rumors of Nokia... And uh, dipping their toe in that. the Android world uh, for the past couple of months, uh, there's some rumors that um, there was going to be an Android phone, and then Microsoft bought Nokia, and there wasn't going to be an Android phone. And now the latest rumor is uh, the uh, site EvLeaks or EvLeaks um, has got the leaked image that we just showed above of a Nokia phone running Android, but with a UI f uh, modeled after the Windows Phone. Yeah, it really does look <laughs> like Windows Phone tiles, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So sure. who knows if this is real or if this is actually going to happen, but um, it seems like they've taken the Metro UI and applied that through a series of custom widgets um, to uh, be made available with the uh, with the Normandy phone that is rumored mm -hmm. to come later this year. Whether or not it happens or not, we'll see. Whether you believe this is real, who knows? But uh, yeah, it better because it keeps coming up. <laughs> it's the kind of thing where it keeps coming up. So where's the so unless someone's having fun with yeah. misdirection or whatnot? I I wouldn't be I'm not you know I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Oh, just I would just love this, but but what I think is interesting about these um, about these mockups though, or about the screenshot, or about the thing, is if you look at it in the top there in the. Can you zoom into the top notification bar? You see that the double kind of the yeah. the signal. Yeah, yeah, that, looks that screams uh, to me. Photoshop. Wait a minute, right? Photoshop, Photoshop, Photoshop. Photoshop right? Yep. Yeah. Wait, okay, how did this get by? There how, you go. how did this get by? Especially Evlix. Uh, yep. Yeah, that's a thing. I, this is the Evlix only is I think pretty is solid. Yep. Evlix is pretty solid. Thank you. Mm. I just busted it. <laughs> Good busting. <laughs> Ron's on yeah. fire. No, but the thing is, the but, it but it keeps coming up, so I've got to wonder where, you know, so hmm. where that's coming from. Dual, yeah, some people are saying dual, dual, dual sim. sim, and dual it sim. is a dual sim, uh, according to the article, but, yeah, it still just looks weird. Could be interesting. Yeah, I don't think it's my... I, I mean, because, yeah. yeah, maybe. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, but it's just like two Dual batteries. Sim. What? Oh, yeah. I don't even know what I'm looking at anymore. Yeah, yeah. Strange. You made my brain explode. Uh, I believe that was a holy cow moment. <laughs> uh, and finally, Samsung's uh, VP of Mobile, Lee Young Hee, told Bloomberg that the Galaxy S5, which a lot of people are, oh, uh, you know, every year looking forward to the Galaxy S series, uh, would launch in the mid March to mid April uh, time frame as would the Galaxy Gear, the next version of the Galaxy Gear. And we, I mean, we heard as soon as, like, immediately after the launch yep. of the Galaxy Gear that there was a new one planned for early 2014, which sounded kind of weird. Uh, he admitted the first generation of the Galaxy Gear wasn't what they had hoped, and that the next generation Galaxy Gear should be unveiled about around that time. Uh, Samsung is pretty much expected to make an announcement sometime in March at an event in New York, which is what uh, they did last year. Uh, we can only uh, hope... Uh, that it's as entertaining yes. as it always seems to be. <laughs> the return. Yeah, yeah, jazz hands. Fuzzy. Samsung. <laughs> Man, I hope so. It's so much fun to talk about. Oh, Broadway. The Great White Way and Samsung. Together. When I think of Broadway, I think of Samsung. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> Unfortunately for <Yeah>. Broadway. <laughs> All right. Do we have an email, Gina? We do. We have an email. Uh, we have an email from Nikki M who writes in, I have, hi, I have started using my Google Now all the time for timers that I need, but I've discovered they are creating alarms every time, which I really don't like. Allow me to explain. Nikki works at a job, Nikki says, I work at a job where I go on break and the minutes are tracked because I log in and out of my computer. I'm also really easily distracted, so I forget to look at the time and I go on break. What I've started doing is saying, okay, Google, set timer for 14 minutes or whatever to give me plenty of time to get back from break. This would work great, uh, but it's not using the timer function of the clock, but the alarm. Now, I have a Galaxy Note 3, so maybe the clock isn't Google's, but Samsung's TouchWiz or something. Either way, now I have over 20 alarms I'll never use again, meaning I have to delete them over, I have to delete them time and time and again. Do you guys have any insight into this? I mean, this is, yeah, this is kind of an annoyance, right? If you set a timer, it's it does. It's great if it works. It does but, put yeah. an alarm. Well, and it works, right? It, it works yeah. as a timer. Right. The problem is it's not just setting a timer. It's actually programming an alarm into your alarm app. Can I try and then it? that's, that persists. I, try it I see. 
I, I so I tried it and yeah. uh, now this is Google Play Edition HTC One, so so it's pure Android. I tried pure. it. I have I have extra. I have Timely installed, right? So I've got two just two different clock apps. So I said set a timer for two minutes, and I got prompted, "Do you want to use Timely or Clock? You know, always or just once?" Uh, you know, I said I said, "Did you use Stock Clock just once?" And the timer went off, and then I went into my alarm section, and there was not an alarm there. Um, so Nikki, I don't know. I don't have a note. I don't have a Galaxy Note three to test on, but I'm thinking maybe you install an alternative clock app, like maybe Timely. Um, you could set the alarms that way, and maybe not have to worry about clearing them out. Just you know, let them pile up there and not worry about it. I don't know. Can, Ron, can, can, can I, can I try, try it? it out? Can I try yeah, it? Let's try I, it. I, uh, wait, wait, hang on. I don't know what to say. Hang on. Google, let's go caroling. All right, hang on. What is it? All right, it's, all right. Stop. No, Google, go away. Okay. Okay, Google, set timer for two minutes. Oh, because I said, okay, Google. All right, okay. so, so it says set alarm when you do that. Yeah, so. And then once it does it. Alarm set for one minute from now. Okay. Now um, you go to your walk and see. Yep. So it's, it's, Okay, so it works. It's setting alarms is not using setting the timer. Setting alarms is not using the timer. And yeah, I mean, the, the question is, does Google now have some sort of, you know, way of, of using the intent of timer versus hmm. alarm? Because when you're setting right. alarms, those alarms persist and they all stack up and then suddenly you've they got 20 up. alarms that you're never going to use. Right. And you have to delete them all. I, tr I actually tried it, Gina, with Timely earlier and it's, uh -huh. it created an alarm uh, in As well. Regard. So, it has so the set timer it. sets an alarm. Interesting. Right. You know, so and, or if you set alarm, it does the same thing. It does the same thing. Alarm. Okay. Yeah. So, so there's, so there's no, no voice. This has been an issue since Google now rolled out. Yeah. This has been interesting a forever. Mm. So I don't know. I don't know what the solution is necessarily on this, other than to say that there are a lot of people that are experiencing the same pain as you, Nikki, and uh, Google do something about it. Well, I, let's not let's not make promises we you can't. <laughs> well, I'm not promising that Google will. I'm just asking that Google does. Oh, you're asking. Oh, right. <laughs> yes. okay, yeah, there you go. Yeah, but um, yeah. I mean, but the thing is, is it's so. I mean, but part of it is also is adapting to how the technology works. And if you know that's what happens, then know that when you kill the alarm, you got to go delete that previous alarm. Like, learn how to use it with what you got. You know, because yeah. it's great. That's a great idea. That's a great little life hack to say to tell Google now to set the alarm and, yeah, and utilize I've it. Used so, that. Yeah, I've used that. For yeah, sure. so if you take a break at the same day every time, then just, I don't know. Just, at the same time every day. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. When was the last time you worked at a job where, like, your, I took a break. your break was oh. timed down to the minute? That, oh, man. 1990. I'm sorry, Nikki. Because I've definitely worked those jobs, and that's no fun. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. I worked, at civil, I worked at the library. It was a civil service job where you had to take a break. Uh -huh. uh, 15 minute break every three hours and they hated me because I thought that mean I could come to work 15 minutes late or leave 15 minutes early because I'm like oh, <laughs> and they're like no it has to be in the middle of your shift I'm like but I'm working but it doesn't like, matter okay, the work yeah, yeah the yeah. same amount of work gets <laughs> right. done exactly yeah, yeah. that's true I yeah. re I'm having flashbacks right. I've been there that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm pretty sure yeah. I worked at it Sears mean you can Credit leave Central at that yeah. point it doesn't mean you can leave early I'm like no I think it does <laughs> it should yeah. If it doesn't, uh, let's th let's take a break and thank our other sponsor for today's episode, Linda, lynda.com. It's an online learning company that can help anyone learn creative software and business skills to achieve both personal and professional goals. And if you haven't checked out Linda, you have to go to the site right now. It's lynda.com. And you can get a subscription there. Members actually receive a ton of stuff, unlimited access to a vast library of current and engaging video tutorials across a wide variety of subjects. Everything from creative software skills to business negotiation and app development. With lynda.com, you're going to learn how to code, create, and build Android applications in Java from the foundations of object-oriented Java programming to using the Android API to create engaging mobile apps. You can learn to develop apps for today's popular desktop and mobile platforms, build web apps with .NET, PHP, MySQL, uh, and improve your language skills with JavaScript, Ruby, C, C++, R, and so much more. I mean, they have it all. They have all of the bases covered. Um, I'm you know, the, the things that I'm most interested in with Linda, and they have just a fantastic uh, bunch of them, are music, you know, tutorials and and uh, insight into like how how people do different things in the audio and music industry, like setting up their studio acoustic wise, uh, you know, with acoustic sound panels and everything. And I'm going to need that at our new house, uh, setting up my studio with, with the panels that I already have, live sound engineering techniques that you can, you know, 
practically go backstage with Rush on tour and see how their professionals do that kind of stuff. I find it fascinating. Even if it's not something that you're trying to learn for a specific thing, it's really entertaining. And it's uh, there's just a ton of great content. Fans of this show, you guys are going to find just a ton of stuff about becoming a better developer. Check out Linda's developer tutorials to learn the fundamentals of programming as well as specialized insight on a number of languages. They just have the whole thing covered. Over 2,000 courses, new courses added daily. Uh, you can find you know tutorials specific to programming, uh, the SDK Essentials training, Java applications, building and monetizing game apps for Android. Uh, there's, some, there's a little something for everybody. Instructors are actually working professionals and they're at the top of their fields and expert teachers so the videos are really easy to understand and to follow you're just going to learn a lot from these high quality videos and uh you know they're they're taking you into their own state-of-the-art studios to show you these things they aren't homemade videos that you're going to find on youtube it's all curated course content and uh, each linda course uh, is carefully structured so that you can learn from scratch start to finish or you could Jump to a specific chapter if that's easier easier for you. Searchable transcripts, so you can literally go through the transcript transcripts, click on a particular part, and that's going to take you to that particular part of the video. Jump you right there, so you can dial in on exactly what you want to watch. Uh, watch from your computer, tablet, or, or your mobile device, and you can switch and pick up on the chapter where you left off. Learn at your own pace on your own schedule. That's what it's all about. So it's only $25 a month for access to the entire lynda.com course library. And I'm telling you, they have a ton of videos there. Uh, or you, or for $37.50 a month, you can subscribe to the premium plan, which actually includes exercise files that let you follow in, along with the instructors using the same project assets that they do. Uh, so it makes it easy to, you know, copy code over or or copy that that thing in you know logic and and you know it just makes it easy to replicate exactly what you're learning, uh, but you can try Lynda.com right now. That's l y n d a dot com right now with a free seven day trial, and it's pretty much it's an all you can eat trial, right? You go to Lynda.com slash all about Android, you'll get access to the entire library, and like I said, that's over two thousand courses for free for seven days. So you can just it's a smorgasbord. Of, uh, of of learning material. Smorgasbord. <laughs> <laughs> That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash all about Android. Check it out. Seven days of free video. Uh, awesome stuff. And then uh, if you like it, sign up. Cool. So before we move on to apps, uh, yep. the chat room has been on the case. And apparently... <gasps> on the case. We're going to see if this works now. Oh, look, my lower third changed already. Good job, Brian. All right. Uh, so if you say, <gasps> if you say, okay, Google. Come on, Google. All right, fine. Remind me in five minutes to go to sleep. Oh, yeah, reminders don't use the clock, do they? They just use Google now. Yes. Remind, remind me, me when. Okay. At right. One time, remind me at this time. What that does is that uses the timer. Does it? Not the remind, not the, where are the timers? Right there. Does it use the timer or does it just set a reminder? I think, in Google I think it just now. set a reminder in Google now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, hmm. well, then that, you know, that's, 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 that's good that because that'll still sound the alarm. Yep. So it does. So it does that, and then once it's done, it's done. It's so gone. so would that be on today's calendar then? So that would be no. It's it's its own reminder. If you go into Google Now settings, you'll find. Uh, so you'll so your, go you'll over see to Google Now. Reminders. All right, Google Now. And then oh, there it is. Yep, right there. Okay, and scroll down yep. all the way uh, to the bottom. You've got this uh, little reminders thing right there. There's your reminder. Yep. Reminder. Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, you can hardly yeah. see it because it's blown out. But it here, says wait, go on, to hang sleep. Hang on, hang on. All right, this is what we're gonna do here. We're gonna fix this. Interesting. We're gonna make this happen here. All right, there we go. Okay, so I go to Google now. I've got the reminder here. Mm -hmm. So you go to sleep at 6.07. But did it okay. sound an alarm? And then here are my reminders. So you want to use reminders, not the timer. Yeah. We'll it, see what it happens. Does, it though. does post a notification. So it posts a notification. But I does, use it for TV shows. I'm like, tell me when there's going to be a new episode of The Good Wife. Does it? That's every it, Sunday night, Gina. Yeah, well, not over the holidays, though. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a good question is whether or not it sends an alarm or not. That's a good question. That's, that's what I'm wondering, because yeah. if he's out on his smoke break or whatever the break is, yeah. uh, and the alarm doesn't sound, and he's not looking at his phone to see the notification reminder, yeah. might still miss it. Um, because we didn't hear an alarm when that went off, right? No, yeah, well, here, we, we, can, we can wait for this. Here, let me, all right, let me dismiss that reminder. Uh, all right. You work on that. Well, I can't. Well, whatever. We'll work on no. it later. But that okay. might or be whatever. a clue. So there you go. All right. So. It's a clue. Yeah. All right. Let's jump into apps. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. I know all you gamers out there, the one thing you've been waiting for in 2014 was an update to Google Play Services. Well, this is your lucky day. Google Play Services 4.1 got rolled out um, by Google and some interesting additions to Google Play Services now. Turn-based multiplayer support for two to eight players per game. I love turn-based games, and that's a pretty good, uh, you know, mm -hmm. expanding that multiplayer kind of experience. Um, they've also got a new Google Drive API um, uh, integration allowing, allowing for offline files and automatic syncing with your Google Drive account. And furthermore, they've got, uh, with Google+, Plus, better autocomplete for Gmail recipients, including people in your G+, circles. Oh, wait a minute. So anyone in your circles yep. will autocomplete. Yes. I think also another part of this is that people who have you, well, yeah, so yeah. like the, you can email anyone that you have in circles, yes, essentially. Yes, pretty much. You can opt out of it, by the way. Of course. Yep. You have to go into your settings in Gmail. And uh, if you go into the settings, how about halfway down the list, it'll say, you know, can people, you know, on Google Plus email you through yeah. Google Plus or, or you know, yeah. through Gmail. And you can whatever. see, actually, Brian, we have, there's a screenshot up on that uh, of this, this new Gmail uh, integration where you can see it as you're typing in, uh, you know, in this case, you type D and you get not only your contacts, but then you get your Google Plus connections. So if you need to email Dong Chen, Dong Chen from your Google, Plus, Google mm -hmm. Circles, he's mm -hmm. right there. There he and is. That's an email. That's not. That's not a Google Plus notification. That's a. That's a real. That's a real that's Gmail integration as part yeah. of the email. as part of the services. Yeah. That would end yeah, up in yeah, yeah. in his email yep. inbox. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about that? It's. I mean, it's inevitable. Everything's all moving there. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I. I don't know. I get confused on this <laughs> it, one because it's kind of like email. Email once used to be so private. Yes. And in yeah. some ways it still is, but in some ways it's not. Like, if if it doesn't take the craftiest of individuals to figure out my work email here, yeah. right? Because we all have the same kind of formatted email. Right. So yeah. it's, but I've been we've been doing that for personal, years. But it's but, not. But really. you know, but that's been happening for years. That's no different than now. I mean, I remember ten years ago trying to track people down at record labels or at companies, and you're like, oh, well, I got an email from this person, and here's the the nomenclature. So if I just substitute that, I can right. get to them. Yeah. That's fine. What I think is more interesting is the. Ident the stuff that Google's doing with identity around Google Plus and the yeah. idea of coming up in search results or coming up in caller IDs or things like that and tying that to your Google Plus account, which eventually could tie you to a Gmail account. You know, I think that's more interesting. Do I see a point where Gmail fades into Google Plus and it's just all Google Plus? Possibly. I mean, and it, oh. makes, and it makes me really regret that week when Google Plus rolled out and we got inundated with people in circles and like my circles are just unbelievably a mess and I have no time to fix it. So yeah, but um, and there's they're slowly merging and we've seen what Google does and I I, I bet you they want to just get rid of the concept of email and you just I want to type to Jason, yeah, and it just hits you wherever you are. Yeah. Uh, free Wi-Fi in the chat room brings up a, an interesting point. It's simple similar to a plus mention in Google Plus. So if you have a Google Plus account, and you know people have you in their circle. anybody anybody can can plus you know mention you mention on you. on Google mm -hmm. Plus. If you have your notifications on, uh, the notification emails on, you're gonna get an email. So it's kind of the same thing, yeah, right? Right. So yeah. it's kind of splitting hairs yeah. in, in some ways. Speaking of notifications, I got, I, I got the reminder. Uh huh. And no sound went off. Nothing That's, happened. But yeah. I had audio turned oh. off. Oh, okay. You had audio yeah. turned off. Web fifty seven twenty five said his uh, or her uh, did sound did sound a, uh, a yeah. notification alarm. Maybe I have to turn my volume up? And someone's yeah. saying, PID256 is saying, you can say to Google, remind me with an alarm in one minute. Let me try that one. Wait a minute. That's a, that's Remind a me twist. with an alarm. Oh, hang on. Okay. <laughs> remind me with an alarm in one minute. Oh. Uh, yeah. And so it's set an there. alarm. There you go. So the moment you say alarm, but, it goes to an alarm. Yeah, it goes to so an alarm. So let me alarm. try another one. So, okay, Google. Remind me in one minute. Jerk. <laughs> All right, yeah, so, so you got one. the reminders. Menu. Okay, so there you go. So. But, but make sure a notification you have notifications turned on with the ringtone and vibrate and stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, I just turned it up. So yeah, there you go. Okay. All right, so we'll see what happens in a minute. Sorry, go on. By right. golly, we will get to the bottom of this. I'm obsessed. Yeah, Nikki, I'm working for you. We're working for you. I know, right? <laughs> uh, so real quick here, Samsung of all companies released a new app to help you keep tabs on all of the events at the upcoming Winter Olympics in, so is it Sochi, Russia? Sochi. Sochi. Uh, okay. Oh, did I just activate S-Voice on this Galaxy <laughs> Tab 3 
Lovely name for this tablet, by the way. Uh, there you go. Uh, the kicker being, the, it, well, okay, so it's you know it's a pretty well designed app, and obviously you can't see much right now because there are there are no events happening. This this isn't going to happen until next month. Uh, so it's a, just a kind of a great way to be able to monitor all of the events at next month's Winter Olympics. The trick being, you have to have a Samsung device to run it. Which is, oh. yeah, seriously, oh. like okay, oh. I I get it for like Samsung like hardware embedded apps and stuff like that, but man, this would be useful for everybody. Are there ties to this app in TouchWiz that require that you are running a Samsung? No, or is it just, no. Are not. they're just they're just being petty about it. They're just <laughs> like no, you, this they're is the just Samsung being perk. Babies, uh -huh. that's messed up. Yeah, I agree. That's crazy. I'm offended. I'm offended. I know. I, I was like, I, I saw, I saw it come up, and I was like, oh, that's a really well designed app. I'm gonna get that. Well, I, don't, I don't want to use it anyway. Yeah. Whatever. Samsung. Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, uh, if if you have Samsung, you can you can enjoy it. There you go. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> what well, do we in have? Better next? news. Yeah. <laughs> in, in better news for Chromecast owners. It looks like the Google Plus Android app may soon get Chromecast support. We we only know this because some nerd like grabbed the latest uh, distribution, opened it up and found the Chromecast icons in the drawable uh, folder, which is the folder where you store your image assets for, for Android apps. So the no, one, no official announcement, not enabled yet. But um, I really like this idea of the Google Plus getting Chrome, Google Plus app getting Chromecast support. Not because I spent a whole lot of time in the Google Plus app, I'll be honest, but there are lots of times when I want to cast local content and I've got auto backup on, you know, so if I take yeah, a picture of the baby, I take stuff. a video of the baby, there's often times when I just want to send it to the TV and show it to who's ever in the living room. And there isn't a, an easy way to do that now. I know there are, there are a couple of ha hacky ways to go around doing that, but you know, so this would sounds like would be a really good way. So Chromecast support, Google Plus, I want to see it. I yeah. want to see Chromecast support everywhere, honestly. Yeah, totally. I would be surprised if, if this image doesn't appear in pretty much all currently updated Google apps eventually. Yeah. Uh, you know, Chromecast all the things. If it's, if it's truly their initiative for the living room uh, yep. that they're really getting behind, then they'll figure out some way. Although when I read this, I was like, okay, Google Plus on my TV. Why do I need that? But you're right. Photos and videos I could see being the And auto awesome. The like I... I often will get an auto awesome video uh, notification and I want to just send it to the TV and show it to my wife, you yeah. know, and like, hey, hey, look at this instead of holding, you know, up my phone. So yeah, that's something yeah, I, totally. I would definitely use. So cool. Uh, and finally, Ron, yeah. in your ongoing saga. So, real quickly, the saga of, SM of Hangouts replacement apps and SMS <laughs> apps. Um, on Monday, someone on Twitter, oh, it reminded me and it made a noise. Okay, so it was so a, there you go. It was so a blink, blink, blink there you go. noise. So, and I just got a text message, so sorry. <laughs> Let me turn my volume back down. So, um, what you need to do is use reminders and turn your volume up, okay? Um, who wrote that in? Nikki? So, there you go. Reminders. <laughs> okay. Anyway, SMS apps. So, earlier this week, um, uh, on Monday, I believe, and if I could look up the person's name, I will tell you who recommended it, but, um, okay, uh, at ICU on uh, Twitter recommended I check out a new app called Evolve SMS. Okay. And um, it's by the same people who did Sliding Messages yeah. Pro, if you remember them, um, and said, you know, given my SMS woes, this might be an app I want to check out. So I'm thinking, okay, great, this is Monday. I got, I got a day and a half to use this app. I'm totally going to do it in the arena. Let me check it out. This app is beautiful. It's um, really the SMS messaging app that I wanted, that I would want to see. Um, basically it's, it's an evolution of the kind of ho hollow design, but also kind of like Google plusy and kind of modern. Um, I'm going to open it up here and here, so it opens up right and please ignore the phone number, but anyway, but you can see up top, you see, it uses the avatar of the person in your contacts, mm -hmm. but then does that weird effect where it, um, where it kind of, uh, blurs it in the background. Mm -hmm. So it looks very visually nice. Um, but then what happens is, is that you can go back to it now. Um, what happens is that it hides the 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 list of messages on the side here all right and then it's just really nice and slick and it's just you know um it's got emojis and you know integrates really nicely um it's just a well-designed app and it's almost like a future you know it's a it's a now kind of app you know with the design they did a great okay. job on it so i installed it i used it um until this morning when i finally had to stop using it because it is super laggy um, you get a text, uh, you get a text message and it opens up the app. And then I sat there on the white screen for about a minute before the text message would show up. 
Oh. Um, so oh. that's, and I saw, I was looking in the comments and other people are see, seeing similar, you know, kind of um, run into it, you know, similar kind of uh, problems with it. And that was the same reason why I stopped using Sliding Messages Pro. I think uh, this developer has got a great job at doing a great slick UI, but actually making it scalable and making it work. Like I have a lot of text messages and I talked to a lot of people and maybe that was a part of it. Um, but I'm going to keep an eye on it. I'm keeping it installed on my phone. I'm going to keep trying to use it. But it wasn't arena worthy because I was afraid someone might go and use it and be like, oh, this is laggy. So yeah, it looks like some of the reviews in the Play Store are also complaining of the same thing. Yep. Yeah. Lags. So so the thing is, is that I it's it's an app to keep an eye on. I think that they're in, going in the right direction. The UI mm -hmm. is really, really nice. Um, it's, it's um, visually, it is the SMS app I would want to see. It's just got to be able to perform as good as Textra and as, as, uh, Handicent or some of the other ones do. Mm -hmm. So once they get the performance uh, issues resolved, then it'll be good. It's got, it's got great themes and the settings are really, are, are really, um, advanced. You can, uh, change the notification icon and the color and all that sort of stuff. I mean, look at these screenshots. I mean, it's yeah. like, it's a really, it's a really good approach to an SMS app. So, um, but it's just got to work a little better. So there you go. Awesome. Yep. Well, and it just, yeah, it just came out. It, ju yeah, it just sure came out on Monday. Yeah. yeah. So give the give the guys some breathing room. Time. But that was the reason why I stopped using Slotting Messages Pro too. I used that for like two weeks, mm -hmm. and it would like a message would come in, and I would watch it. Just I just watch wait for it to come up. You know, oh like, yeah, that's yeah, frustrating. Yeah, so or it crashes yeah, that's not, or whatnot. Not okay for yeah. the SMS and SMS app. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. So keep an eye on it. Uh, Evolve SMS. Evolve SMS. All right. Evolve SMS. <laughs> Let's see here. Real quick in glassware news. This is a, this is kind of interesting. Drive Safe has an app that you can uh, install onto glass. It makes you a better, well, safer. Maybe not a better driver, but a safer, safer driver. driver. It's it's whole. Uh, thing is it detects when you're nodding off while you're driving. Oh, I needed that on the way up here today. <laughs> and when you are, Whoa. it gives you an alert. It appears you are falling asleep. It uses the bone conducting speaker to give you a little buzz in your head. <laughs> to zap you. <laughs> yeah, to zap you awake. Uh, and then, you know, as it shows here, find next rest area. Uh, so, you know, might make you a little safe. What What do you guys think about this? But is it Isn't okay? Isn't it illegal to yeah. wear glass while you're driving? That was my I, question. I think that's kind of that the gray area? It's total it's a, gray area right yeah. now. It's in the courts right now. Cecilia, can't remember, Abadi Ab or Ebadi uh, is the one, is the woman that was pulled over while wearing glass a few months ago and given a ticket for having a screen in her field of vision. Right. Um, she's our, ja she's our Jamie Thomas of glass? Yeah, pretty much. No, absolutely. Right? Totally. That's that's a, exactly for those of you who remember 2007... With the uh, oh man, that went on for years. The RIAA and downloading MP3s. P poor Jamie Hi. Thomas, who Jamie, Jamie, was it Jamie? Even, well, it it looks like Jamie, but yeah, it's actually yeah, Jamie. Yeah. Yes. Oh man. So anyway, so so it's you know, as of yet undetermined whether it actually is illegal to be wearing glass, but uh, if it's not, this might help you stay awake. Although I'm wondering, you know, those times when you're laying down in bed and you're falling asleep, and then you jolt, and suddenly you wake, and your entire body does this whole thing. Yeah. What if you're like. Yeah. Fall, about to nod off behind the wheel and you feel that like bzz, and I mean <laughs> couldn't that make you overcorrect and that could be dangerous potentially I don't know I maybe, I'm, maybe I'm looking too much into it drive safe should uh, alert you when there's a cop nearby and tell you to take off glass so you don't get ticketed <laughs> <laughs> not a bad idea drive safe I hope you're watching <laughs> that one's for free oh wow so the Jamie Thomas case is still going it, is it? No, as of September 11, 2012, it was in the U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals, and this, the damages were reinstated to the first judgment of $222,000. So, for downloading an MP3. For downloading an MP3, yeah. So, okay. Was this the kid? It was the young kid? No, no, no. no this is the mother. She who's my age, oh, okay. actually. Yeah. But um, she's married now, so that's good. She seems to be doing well. Um, the, the RIA, didn't stop her from getting married, so that's a good thing. The RIA good. sent Thomas a cease and desist letter and settlement offer in August 2005. Thomas declined the settlement offer on April 19, 2006. Several major record labor, sev several major record labels sued Thomas for copyright infringement of unauthorized downloading and sharing of 24 recordings, sound recordings on Kazaa under Kazaa, the username right. uh, Teresa Star at Kazaa. The labels complaint alleged that Thomas infringed copyright on February 21st, 2005, downloading and distributing songs by such bands as Aerosmith, Green Day, and Guns N' Roses. Rather than seeking actual damages, the plaintiff saw, sought relief via statutory damages assessed in accordance with some law. And so what happened was that in her first in her first trial, she was found 
uh, damages of $222,000, $9,250 per song. <laughs> then it got appealed, and it was uh, adjusted to statutory damages of $1.9 million, or $80,000 per song. Then it was adjusted down to $54,000, and then the plaintiffs re rejected the adjustment. The third trial gave her $1.5 million in damages. Then the damages reduced to the constitutional maximum of fifty-four thousand, and then the appeal reinstated it back to two hundred twenty-two thousand dollars. Seven years later, that's insane. I'm sorry, there's nothing to do with Android. This segment brought to you by Wikipedia. Yeah, I love Wikipedia. It's great. <laughs> that's unbelievable. That was like the biggest news when podcasting was starting. Do you remember that? The Jammy yeah. Thomas show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, oh so. yeah. That was big, big news. Yep. I hope those no doubt songs are worth it, Jammy. <laughs> oh, no doubt. They list all the songs uh, on Wikipedia. It's genius. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and now back to arena uh, Android. Let's get into the arena. <laughs> so many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Android Arena. This is, this is why we don't start early. <laughs> <laughs> because we get sent down the oh, Jamie yeah. Thomas. Rat holes. Rat hole. <laughs> Last week, I gotta tell you, I, I I missed doing the show with you guys, but I really missed that bumper a lot. So, oh, that bumper is it's a thing of it's a thing of beauty, isn't it? Yeah. It is. <laughs> if only we Sorry. could make that bumper into a a, a boot animation for, for oh Android. chat room audience just, just community. There you go. Some some custom ROM would would that would be cool. Should uh, integrate it. That'd be very very cool. Uh yeah, let us know. AA at twit.tv. Email me. <laughs> uh, okay, last week, episode 143, we had three apps in the arena. Network Monitor Mini wins at 53% of the vote. City Mapper comes in second at 25%. Uh, and Talkatone, that was mine, which was ill-fated because yeah. shortly after yeah. I introduced it. Yep. Yeah. So Jason, there we you go. and I had, didn't have a chance. We didn't have a chance. Apparently to not. Monitor Mini. No I, mean, I saw that from him. Yeah, apparently not. But you know what, Gina? In this case, you did kind of win uh, in the in the fact that you know you get to go last. You don't have to go first, <laughs> and I have to go first. So uh, let's see here. So I have an app here. So every once in a while, I like to choose an app in the arena that is created by a fan of the show. Oh, playing to the home crowd. Oh, boy. Uh, oh, boy. How do I compete look, with that? Look, That's I not. lost last week, all right? Come on. That's like choosing your kid's app. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Uh, so, okay, so uh, this app is called Photo Calendar, and I... I just thought it was... It's, oh, the photo's going to be of your child? Yes. It's like It's like a double whammy. Yes, like, if you want to start uh, <laughs> some some really you know comforting, uh, playful music, uh, Brian, you're more than welcome to. Okay, so basically it's a widget. It's a photo calendar widget. And essentially, have you ever had those calendars you know that have a different photo for every month sure, and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. It's basically that in widget form. And I thought, you know what, it's it's pretty, pretty nicely uh, designed. Uh, you can, you know, obviously you can change it. And as you change it, it kind of changes the formatting from single to multiple months. But kind of the thing with this is that you can actually go through and, you know, assign a different photo for all 12 months. It just kind of, you can have it parked on your on your lock screen or on your home screen, uh, as I do right here. And you can kind of create your own calendars both for your device as well as share them with others. Uh, if you go through the app here, we'll get to photo calendar. Uh, you can actually create a calendar and, you know, essentially share it to whoever you want so that you're basically giving someone a photo calendar. So is it just one photo per month? Yes. It can't like rotate or no, cycle? No, that's not how the original <laughs> photo calendar thing was. Photo calendars always had one photo. Okay, all right. It just might be, you know, like Snoopy right. or, or something. Or a cat hanging on a branch that's just hanging there. Yeah, exactly. Right. Hang in there. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> Anyways, it's a, it's a pretty straightforward app, but um, Andreas Ebert Karom is the developer, and uh, you know I I, cool. I believe I saw it in the in the in the all about Android community on Google Plus and installed it, and I've had it installed for a couple of months, and I'm like, you know what, I've had it installed for a couple of months, mm -hmm. and I enjoy looking at it. It of course it should be featured. So there you yeah. go, it's pretty straightforward. If you go to the app itself and you create one, uh, that can be you know, essentially synced into the cloud, uh, it'll give you a little code, and that's the code that you can share with people. And what are you doing? Glare. Oh. 
Like, yeah. Sorry, you don't like my Brian, Brian was freaking out at the glare. Thanks, Brian. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, see? There is, see, if you <laughs> had this, you could assign this and 11 mm. other awesome cat, cat hanging in there pictures mm. to all of the different images. So there you go. It's cool. It's a good app. He's a good job. There you go. Yeah. And you know what? I'd like to throw it out there to the, de yeah. the developers that follow the show, Andreas. I uh, did a good job with this. So that is photo, calendar, widget, and... Uh, oh, wait, and he's in the chat room. Oh, there you Andreas go. Andreas is in the chat room, so even, even better. Look at that. I'm telling you. Good on you. Good on you, Andreas. <laughs> he knows how to play the game. Yeah. He yeah, knows how to win in the arena. Okay. <laughs> so there you go. Photo calendar widget. And uh, what do we have next here? That would be wrong. Next, all right. So this was a close call with this with this app here in the arena because uh, after 972 episodes, um, we've never repeated an app in the arena. But I came very close. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, it's it, a different app. But it's a, but it's a different app. But it, but it came came close to accidentally doing it. Um, you might remember. Geez, how long ago did you do that app? It was uh, like in the 40s, I think. It was, it was in the 40s, in episode yeah. 40s. Episode 622. Um, you you would you would review Jotterpad HD, HD, and the folks behind Jotterpad HD have come out with a new version of their writing application called Jotterpad X, um, which is a more modern, kind of updated, kind of more um, innovative kind of approach to the writing application. In fact, that they, um, they're they aiming it at very uh, creative writers, and it's a creative kind of app. Um, I find it interesting that they've, they've modeled their app uh, icon to be similar to the Adobe suite of icons. Yeah, yeah is, you're right. But hey, that's all right. So um, if you open up Jotterpad X, um, very nice hollow design, very utilizing all the latest and greatest design stuff. Um, very powerful from what I found. Um, you hit the little hamburger menu, you get this nice little menu here. Um, and basically you can choose in the menu from your recent, um, your recent documents. Um, you can store documents locally on your device or you can store them on your Dropbox. Um, it integrates nicely with Dropbox. So here's all my Dropbox folders and, um, anything that you've got within there, you can go access it to. It was very easy to link it to my Dropbox. Um, when you want to uh, pull up an app, uh, pull up a document, you just tap on it, and it loads it up. It gives you a little title, and it fades into it. And here I've started writing the Great American Novel. Um, and, you know, it's a very simple um, uh, very simple word processing app. Um, but what happens is um, up here, it's very, very light. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a very, very small hamburger menu button there. That pulls up that little menu there. Um, when you pull up the status bar, go back to it. Um, it gives you a word count, and that's something that um, often, if you're if you're a writer where you're writing to a thousand or five hundred word count, I know I'm constantly you got to go and say okay, word count, word count, word count. So it just gives that information to you immediately. Um, you can save you can save the file very easily. You can switch to um, uh, the night mode, which is available in the creative version. There are two versions: the casual version and the creative version. The creative version is the one you got to pay for; casual is free. Um, but if you switch to that one, it switches to an inverted kind of uh, screen. Uh, for the night version. Um, and then in the little menu, there's a bunch of different um, kind of things. What you can do is you can, um, you know, uh, easily, you know, find within the uh, within the document. You can extend the keyboard to provide other, you know, commonly used sim symbols oh, to make nice. it a little easier. That's yeah. which is an easy little function I've ever seen before. You can collapse the keyboard. Um, you can lock the screen, which is available in their creative version, which is an interesting little thing where um, oftentimes, you know, to keep from any other applications interrupting or anything like that, you can lock the screen on what you're writing so you can focus on what you're writing. Um, I encourage you to upgrade to do the paid version because these are all great stuff. You can adjust the file type. Um, and, you know, it's it's the standard file type is text, um, but they've also it also supports .md for markdown or fountain, uh, .fountain version. Um, so if you use any of those, you can utilize those. You can export to PDF. Um, so it's pretty powerful in that regard, and it's pretty slick. It's pretty nice. Um, going back to the menu, um, it keeps track of versions. So as you, and I've only started playing this with briefly, but as you save uh, your, 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 um, uh, save your documents, it does keep track of those version controls. So if you want to go back to a version that you did a couple of edits ago, you can go back to it very easily and find it, which is super, super powerful. Um, but what I thought was interested was the, interesting was also the, the styles, is that they've got a bunch of different styles down here that you can choose from. So in this particular case, I've got the novel style chosen. But if I want to switch to SA, it changes the font and the font size and the header and the he the, the um, headline and the body text. So if you find a, um, if you find a font that you like, specifically, and it's also got um, 
uh, formatting that support it. So this is the screen screenplay version. This is lyrics. So depending on what you do as a creative writer, there's a, they've got a couple of styles that are in place that can help you write into your style. And then of course you can um, you can create your own custom style where you can you know set the font, set the sizes, set the alignment, all that sort of stuff. So Jotterpad X, uh, the next evolution of the Jotterpad application. Um, like I said, the casual version is free. The creative version is um, uh, is paid. And with the creative version, you get the night mode that I mentioned. It's got an integrated thesaurus. Um, you can uh, get a preview of your markdown. Uh, so it's got a whole bunch of stuff that it can that it can be done. So uh, Jotterpad X, the next generation of word processing. TNG. TNG. Jotterpad X. TNG. TNG. <laughs> there you go. Excellent. Well, All right. Good good app. I yeah, approve. You do? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Not, not too close to your it's previous the, the evolution of... Yeah, see, yeah. I'm all about evolution tonight. That's all, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that and pure Android. Pure Android, the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Gina, uh, you are up next. I did install your app, although I didn't open it yet, so... Uh, all right, all right. But I will. Well, so this app is actually very, very simple compared to Ron's uh, demo, but it just, it got me because it's got this really neat design going on. Uh, it's called 12 Hours. It's one word, 12 Hours. And it's a widget. It's an analog clock widget. I generally think that analog clock widgets on a digital device are silly. But what I love about this clock widget is that it integrates with your calendar so it blocks out hours of the day uh, that you have appointments scheduled. So it looks really nice and it lets you uh, see, you know, how you're going to spend your day uh, just at, kind of at a glance. So you can see that, that uh, Jason has it installed. So once you get it installed, you go into widgets, you add the widget to your home screen, and then it automatically prompts you which calendars do you want to show on this clock. You can use multiple calendars. And you can say, hey, use the colors of those calendars too. So I use multiple uh, Google calendars. They have different colors. I choose the ones I want to show on my clock. And then once the clock gets added to your home screen, there's a couple of different styles. I have this really nice, minimalist, transparent KitKat style. And they've got the straight up, the, the one with the numbers that Jason's showing us. You'll see, like, on Jason's calendar, you've got something going on right now. I assume that this is the show. Yeah, uh, I did the, I did the, the blue... Twit Live calendar, so basically the, the live, live calendar, schedule so can... calendar. Nice. So you can see, so we're in the midst of the show, so that's going on now. And then you have something going on afterwards. And SFW. Um, SFW. So you can see, you know, uh, how long until my next appointment, how long until this appointment ends, uh, and I just, I just thought it was, I just thought it was a really clever idea. You know, it's not, it's not a calendar, and it's, and it's a, it's your calendar kind of built into your clock. So it's a nice kind of at a glance look at, at your day, how blocked out your day is, especially during times when you just have have a lot of meetings or or, or going, going to and from different places throughout the day. Uh, so that's it. Just really simple. Just 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 a clock widget, but really nicely designed. There's a couple of different sizes in the in the choices when you add the widget too, right. uh, but you can see it's resizable there, and it's a it's a modern, very very modern modern widget. Looks good on KitKat too. Awesome. Yeah. yeah Twelve can, hours, yeah. and it's free. Now now that I know what the colors represent, that's cool because it's just a good visual indicator of whether you're actually free or not. Yeah. Uh, cool. Twelve hours, one word. Um, all right. So that was the arena. We have photo calendar widget. Uh, that is free. Jotterpad X, uh, that is free as well. And then 12 hours. So it's a free arena. I would like to say that I vote for fo photo calendar widget because <gasps> I'm going to stick with the, uh, with the community. I'm, yeah, I'm going to support I mean, Andreas. It's hard. it's hard not to root for that one because you do want to root for the community for sure. <laughs> well, right now it's pretty I'll tell even. you right now, it's very, very even right very now. Even. Uh, all three apps are performing well in the arena, and I'm sure this will land at some, at some point. It always seems to. Uh, and you know, last year it seemed to land in India on a lot of episodes. It, it did. It did. I miss India. I miss my, my brethren in India, <laughs> <laughs> my supporters. <laughs> Awesome stuff. Well, that is, man, that's it for this week. Flew by. It did. Starting early was, was yeah. Was it something? Was well, something. I mean, we're ending earlier. I feel like it's like, how are we ending so early? Time, time to burn. <laughs> let's talk about absolutely nothing for the yeah, next 20 right. minutes. So let's talk about Jamie Thomas some more. All right, What's cool. she up to? She on you can, MySpace? You can go ahead and pull up the Wikipedia page and read the rest of it to everyone. That would be good. she's on Facebook. What's her taste of music like these days? That's really what oh, I want These days, well, I can tell you what they were like in 2005, and it's not pretty. <laughs> It's not pretty. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> the 24 songs were Aerosmith, Brian Adams, Def Leppard, Destiny's Child, Gloria Estefan, Goo Goo Dolls, Green Day, Guns N' Roses, 
Janet Jackson, Journey, Lincoln Park, No Doubt, Reba McIntyre, Richard Marks, Sarah McLaughlin, Cheryl Crow, wow. and Vanessa Williams. I like, look, I, she's I a mean, 90s I'm girl. To every single one of those uh, artists at some point or another. Like, if I'm going to go to court for music piracy, I don't want it to be over Don't Stop Believing. That's just me. <laughs> don't get me wrong. It's a good song. <laughs> Or uh, I'm a Glee fan, or so the, <laughs> I'll give you Journey. Journey, I'll give you. Right, but this is 2005. Keep in mind, this is before Glee. Yeah, yeah. So, you know what? Okay, fair enough. No one needs to go to court for any of this anymore because now we have Google Play, Google music, Play music, all yeah. access. Oh, exactly. It's like all the benefit of Kaza, but legal. Yeah. Without any of the legal lawsuits. Yeah, without any of the. Uh, however many hundred thousand dollars oh, geez. having to pay for it all. The irony is that one of the songs she downloaded was Bills, Bills, Bills by Destiny's Child. So <laughs> hey, that's a good song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just that, but the thing is I do like I do like the concept of this like precedent setting case yeah. and that what's her face with the Google Glass is gonna be that. That's gonna define what's gonna Cecilia happen with wearables. Abadie. Yeah, yeah. Abadi. I still don't know how to pronounce her last name, but yeah. you're right. It's right. it's a precedent setting uh case for sure. Yeah. All right. That is it. It's time to sign off. Ron, we'll start with you. All right. So if you go to about.me slash RonXO, you can find all the links to my social stuff like Twitter and Facebook and all that fun stuff. Or you can also email me where I do read every email I get. I try to reply to them all, but sometimes I don't. Sorry. Um, you can also go to googleplus.com slash plus Ron Richards, uh, where I am there on Google Plus. And that's my big head. There you are. It's an enormous head. Well, um, it's your page. You could change yeah, it if yeah. you want. Yeah. Let's, uh, Brian, let's not go there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I'm on Google Plus. Uh, I, I was a little MIA in early 2014 just because I was very busy, but I was back. I posted today. So good, good, uh, good. getting on there, trying to get good on Good to it. have you back. But, yeah, it's good to be back. All so, right. Yeah. Right on. And Gina, big, big week for you guys, right? Yeah, big week. Yeah, so I'm co-founder and CTO of a new company called ThinkUp. It's social networking analytics for real people. And we are launching tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon before This Week in Google, which I will also be on on the Twit Network with Leo and Jeff. Uh, so you can see me in post-launch sort of panic mode uh, trying to do the change log, that which would be a lot of fun. How can uh, you do a show during a launch? That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I'm not... <laughs> My co-founder asked me that same question. Yeah, I'm very <laughs> impressed by your dedication. I think I might be, you know, like maybe uh, an hour and then uh, I, I might have to dash early. The whole show, uh, you're going to be like looking at your watch like, oh, I'm yeah, that's watching, an interesting, yeah. Yeah, I got to go. I'm going to be watching web server logs and freaking out about bugs. It's yeah. true. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure it'll make, it'll make it'll make good a good show. Uh, so yeah, come if you like this show, come watch this week in Google on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. And this is basically your last chance to, to sign up for ThinkUp tonight because um, we're gonna we're gonna close down signups uh, while we while we you know go live to our backers. Um, during our crowdfunding campaign for a little while, we're going to do like a limited preview. So if you want to get in last minute, you can still do it. We're going to switch out the homepage, I think, early tomorrow morning. Ooh. And uh, that's thinkup.com. How Thanks, you exciting. Guys. Thank you. Yeah. I can't wait to see the service uh, in action. Hey. Yeah. That's awesome, Gina. Uh, Brian, B-R-Y-A-N. Thank you. That's how you spell your name. Yeah. And uh, you're also not Chad because no. I had in the uh, the the end of the show title slate it still said Chad. It cut me deep. Apparently, <laughs> apparently I don't respect RTD, which oh, no. I sh really should because you're fantastic and thank you for doing the show, Brian. What are you What are you doing these days? Uh, well, thank you, Jason. I just like to give you a bad time. Yeah, but yeah, uh, oh, I know, I know. <laughs> uh, uh, these days, uh, you can find me at brianburnett.com, but also I'm thinking about rooting my Moto X. <gasps> I know I'm pretty happy with it as it is, but Russell did it, and our IT guy. My, yeah, yeah, Russell, our legendary yep, IT he's, guy. He's legendary. <laughs> he is. Uh, so I might do that. Maybe post some things about that. Soon I want to hear about it. If you root it, definitely. Uh, we'll we'll have a segment on the show. We'll we'll hear all about your because we'll, that that is that won't be the first time that you've rooted a device, right? No, no, no. It would not be my. You first survived time. with the incredible because you rooted it. But it would be pretty cool if I could get this as the uh, boot screen. Yeah. Oh man, that would be cool. I'm all in. I'm all in. Yeah. So you had, you had me at boot screen. If we can make that happen, that'd be awesome. I'll be on it. Brad, <laughs> can I plug something before you go? I forgot to plug. Sure. Uh, Brian, I put the link in the thing. Sure. Um, over the holidays at my day job at Image Comics, where we publish wonderful comic books like The Walking Dead and Saga, uh, we rolled out a little interesting bit of functionality for our digital comics that allows you to directly save digital comics you buy from our website to your Dropbox. 
Uh, and so you can nice. save directly from the website to Dropbox. It's very, very cool. Um, and then you can read your comics on your tablet or whatever without having to tra manually transfer any files. So check that out. Dropbox. Imagecomics.com. Cool. There you go. Cool. cool. So, Good stuff. Yep. Happy you got that in there. All right. You can find me at about.me slash Jason Howell. Uh, Google Plus, I'm Jason Howell there too. I'm Jason Howell many places. Uh, or Yellow Gold Music if you want to find my music. That is it for... Th thank you, Brian. There it is. <laughs> Yes, that thing. Awesome. All right, that's it for this week. It's so uh, good. Don't, don't <laughs> I appreciate that, Rob. <laughs> uh, you can leave the show a voicemail, 347-SHOW-AA. You can always send us an email at aa at twit.tv. We are on Twitter at Android Show. We have a subreddit that I do check. I actually refer to to find if there's some stories that are you know, getting a, a, a particular amount of traction. That's twitaaa.reddit.com. Uh, show notes and past episodes can be found at twit.tv slash AAA. You can also find all of our episodes on uh, YouTube as well as iTunes, uh, so check there. And then finally, you can catch us live every Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific, uh, starting uh, ah, ah, live.twit.tv. Right That's there. it. Okay. See you later. Bye. Send no, I'm not letters. Okay. <laughs> you never answer your about me email. It's true. I like Joseph's uh, show title recommendation, All About Jamie Thomas. <laughs> <laughs>